Hey lovely, in this video I'm going to share how I draw different types of people. As an artist, it's really important to have the technical skill set to draw different body shapes, genders, ages, ethnicities, etc. It shows that you have the ability to draw more than just one type of person and it's really going to help beef up your portfolio. On top of that, it's important to be inclusive and show diversity in your art. As an artist, you have the unique opportunity to share stories visually, so use that power really wisely and share the stories and the people that need to be heard. The first person I'm going to focus on is the fabulous Ella Fitzgerald, and I've chosen a couple of different reference photos of her so that we can really get an understanding of what she looks like. I'm going to sh uh, show you her face first, and we're just going to trace over what we're seeing and break down everything into really simplified shapes. So we've got this really poofy hair happening on top. We'll make sure to include curls later. We've got a triangular nose, and we've got really beautiful round cheeks and a rounded jawline as well. And then she's got kind of a wider mouth too, so that's just something to note for later. And then her eyes are not open very wide, so we'll probably keep them really narrow, but I love these super long fake eyelashes so much, so that's really glamorous and we'll include those later. She also has very thin eyebrows, so we really only need to draw a line. And I will exaggerate all of these things even a little bit later, just playing with proportions, but right now just tracing over it is a really good way to understand what's going on. Okay, let's move, let's see, into more of like the full figure to understand her body shape. I'll start with the face again. She's got a longer face, but it's still rounded, which is something to keep in mind. I think when I draw her, I want to draw her with her mouth open as well because she's a singer and I feel like that really helps reflect that. I'm looking at this arm here in this picture and rather than focusing on this foreshortening, I think I will probably end up bringing the arm out. It's going to make a cleaner silhouette. This dress I think really helps taper in her waist a little bit. So we want to emphasize that because that's what she's trying to do with the dress. She's got these lovely like sloped shoulders. And then I like the way that this hand is going out here, so I'm probably gonna include that in my illustration as well. We can probably exaggerate the skirt a little bit more again, just for a more fun flare of a silhouette. And something that helps me is rather than just tracing over only her feet, trying to really understand where the legs are going and what's happening under the skirt. Obviously, I'm not gonna include that in my final portrait, but just really roughing things in, doing like slight tweaks. I'm gonna sort of just change the position of her shoe. But this is a really good pose to use as a reference. And let me just turn the reference off, turn this background white so you can just really sort of see what we're trying to do here. I kept Ella's hair really curly on the top, but then just added some of these straight lines going this way just to hint that it's getting slicked back. And with her eyelashes, I ended up just doing my signature eyelashes, but it looks like her eyes are kind of closed, similar to how they are in this picture. They're just very narrow. I wanted to keep her really expressive and play with her eyebrows, and then I just changed her positioning of her body just a little bit, just to try and make a stronger silhouette. Again, pulling the arm out over here so that you just have more space between her arm and her skirt. And then I ended up making her hand, hand go down just a little bit, like she's in the middle of a song and she kind of just flicks her wrist a little bit. I just felt like that added some nice personality. And then just really played with the curves on the skirt because yes, you're cartoonizing somebody, but then once you start adding elegant line work in there, there's something about it that makes it less cartoony and it actually makes it a really pretty portrait of the person. I also just made sure that her ankles were nice and narrow and tiny because you can see they're really narrow here. And kept a lot of the same positioning as this photo. It was, I thought that this was a really great photo, but I didn't want to do just an exact replica of that. I wanted to sort of combine more pictures of her because this was a way that I could really understand all the different sides of her and how she looks in different photos. The 
next person that I want to draw is George Takai, and he is playing Lieutenant Sulu in Star Trek. Let's first start with his face. He's got a very square jawbone, which is going to be a great shape, great easy shape just to do. We've got triangled nose, pretty straight mouth, kind of a severe almost frown. He's very thoughtful in all of his pictures, like in all of his expressions. He's really focused looking, so I want to make sure to bring that across in the illustration. His eyebrows are basically perfect triangles, which is great. He's got kind of a heavier lid. So make sure to do that. And maybe I like that his eyes, he's usually looking off at somebody else. So I don't think when I draw him, I want him to be kind of looking somewhere else. At ears. And this really <laughs> heavy wide side part that's such like a 60s, 70s thing. I love it so much with this little wispy hair. Okay, so that's sort of his face. And now I wanna be looking at his physique. He is trim and he's toned, but he's not bulky. I don't think I'll draw this exact pose, but I really like, there's a lot of pictures of him um, dueling with a sword, so I feel like I wanna incorporate a sword somehow in the picture, I'm not sure how. But he's got real, really triangular uh, shoulders and also just in general, he's very angular. I don't know if you noticed, but with Ella, I was doing all these very um, fluid S curves. They kind of read more feminine. And with men, they read a little bit more masculine with and when you add angles in. And remember, we're not going to be drawing over on top of him when we're actually drawing him. I'll draw to the right of the screen, but this is just a way to really simply break down kind of complicated poses and facial structure and all of that. Um, this really is just gonna help you simplify things. So let me take these reference photos off and you can see what we're working with here. Here's that pose a little bit. I know it's super small and kind of sloppy, but it's really helping me understand these basic shapes. And then here's his face. Here he is, let's start by looking at his face. We got that really strong square jaw, the triangular eyebrows, his eyes are looking off to the side. And by just adding these lines here, you kind of get that idea of the heavy lid. We've got that real intense side part. And then I made his ear stick out, which kind of cartoonizes him a little bit more. And with his entire portrait, just because his face was so angular, I really wanted to make sure to mirror that in his physique. So we've got those triangular shoulders and it narrows down because his hips, his waist, it's really narrow, very narrow hips, which is why I ended up kind of heightening that by even making his uh, legs just pretty skinny and narrow just so that everything is wide on the top. With his fingers, I also did a square fingertip in comparison to Ella where I kind of did something more like tapered with her fingers. Again, those curves being more feminine. I went with these sort of harsh, um, edges where his fingers end, just to kind of keep mirroring all of these harsh lines that are happening. Next up on the list is Humphrey Bogart, and he is just very iconic looking. This one's gonna be a lot of fun, so let's go ahead and just take a look at these references that I've collected, and we'll start with the face. I love his super expressive puppy dog eyebrows. He's always got these wrinkles. He's not a handsome man, but he's just got like such a look. You can't forget it. Kind of a wide, higher forehead and a really long face. He's got a big nose, but it's kind of shorter in comparison to above his lips. So I think I'm gonna really, you know, heighten that or exaggerate it, I should say. Pretty full lips and sort of just these jowls cleft chin. It's so funny, I feel like he's got bits, like a cleft chin is such an iconic, beautiful masculine thing, but then he's got these really like heavy, jowly jaws and it's this great combination. It's very entertaining to me. His hair is usually pretty tight and slicked on his head, so we'll kind of do that there too. And with his eyes, again, sort of, everything's a little bit droopy and we might do some like dark circles a little bit too. I really like this pose. I like kind of the hand in the pocket 
and uh, the cigarette and even just his facial expression here is great too so I'll probably bring that into my drawing when I get there but for now let's also just focus on his physique so he's a bit wider than George was um, but not quite as fit and also I feel like this suit it's kind of a little bit frumpy too which I I kind of like so we can sort of exaggerate the frumpiness like in comparison with George, I've tapered George's pant legs really in, but with Humphrey Bogart, I think I'm gonna do a wider leg. It's just gonna make everything look baggier and frumpier. Even with his shoes, we're gonna do a rounded toe versus a pointed toe. And I'm gonna exaggerate all of this once I can be doing a little bit more freestyle. You're a little bit locked in with the picture when you're tracing over it like that, which is why it's so important to draw on your own so that you can really be playing and pushing with the lines. Like I'm feeling a little bit trapped in by these poses right now. So I think I'm gonna show you what they look like without the reference photos. They're sort of the figure, just wide, dumpy, frumpy. <laughs> and then the face where you're, see you're seeing just the most important elements to include. I'm definitely gonna exaggerate this later. Is. we'll start from the top I wanted to do this really big wide forehead just to sort of hint at a receding hairline which you really see happening in this picture here I made sure that his hair was slicked um, really close to his head have some ears poking out these big uh, wrinkles in the forehead very expressive eyebrows sort of heavy lid and droopy eyes and I made his nose short and I left a lot of space here between his nose and where his upper lip is and then of course included the cleft chin it took me a minute to sort of figure out the pose that I wanted to put him in, but ultimately I really enjoyed sort of the casualness of having a hand in a pocket, but combining that with the suit, I feel like that just matches his vibe. He's sort of debonair, um, but like a little, I don't know, chill at the same time. <laughs> um, even his bow tie isn't perfectly straight, so he's got a hand in a pocket, and we've got these big wide pant legs and also this almost looks a little bit clown-like, um, which is the point is he's got this big, long, rounded toe. And I changed the position of the hat just to be a top view and did a couple of simple lines. We didn't need to get so much detail uh, as was happening here. And there he is. Last but not least is Maggie Smith, specifically playing the Dowager Countess in A Downton Abbey. She has so much sass and attitude as this role, and it's gonna be so much fun to draw this as a character. So let's go ahead and try and understand what's happening in her shape and the shapes of her face. To sort of show the age, we're gonna really heighten probably the saggy cheeks, and her mouth is a very thin line. It almost just looks like she's sucking on a lemon all the time, and you can sort of use some of these upper lip lines to really show that. I think her nose will be probably a little bit higher. Heavy eyelids. And then if I can almost have the eye half up with a little bit of white underneath, I think it's gonna give almost like an eye roll, like bored, annoyed look, which feels very fitting for her character. And a raised eyebrow. And then we'll also, I think I'm gonna draw her in this outfit. So we'll go ahead and play with this hat shape. That shape. And then her hair, I might probably even bring it out a little bit more. Covers her ear, so we'll only show underneath that part of the ear. And make sure to include lines to imply the direction that the hair is moving in. So that's there. Let's go ahead and look at her posture because I probably will draw a pose similar to this, but I might change it up a little bit just to make that cleaner silhouette. Just kind of loosely trace over the face. We don't really need to focus on that right now. She's got a very upright, perfect posture stance, and I'll probably tweak some of the lines to really hint that. Like if I bring this line in forward, it looks like she might be sucking in and standing really straight. If I bring this line in, yeah, it kind of looks like she's sucking in, which fits that silhouette really nicely. I will probably even bring that shape out more, just because it's more interesting to have some more angles. The hand placement here, I actually think I might move it higher because I want more space. There's just, it's covering up her waistline and I wanna see her waistline. 
So I will probably do our hands up here. Bring the other hand that might be coming from the back over there. And our cane. Maybe do a couple of lines to imply what's happening with the dress. And then I'm not gonna get detailed with this. I'm just gonna do frilly stuff just to imply that that is a frilly white lacy shirt. Okay, so we'll turn our photos off. You can sort of see the shape that's happening here. And then <laughs> the face. I know it's not pretty yet, but I'm just getting down the basics. Like these are the things that I really need to make sure to include. The number one thing that I wanted to include was this arched eyebrow. It is so sassy. I did the heavy lids, kind of gave her a little bit of an eyelash so she has that feminine flair, but also made sure to include wrinkles so that you could see her age. Did a really tiny little bow tie mouth that looks like it's puckered in, also with sort of the lines at the upper lip. Included a little bit of the droop in the cheeks so that you could see she's an older woman. And then just did a couple of basic lines so you can see the direction that the hair is moving in underneath the hat. I changed a lot about the pose. I, mean, I made it a little bit more of a profile. Um, it's just a cleaner silhouette. So kind of angled her back in just so it looks like she's really standing up straight. Brought these lines down here. I just did a little bit more angles just to add some more interest, visual interest to the piece. And with her hands, I really wanted to make sure that they weren't, her arms weren't coming down in front of her waistline because I think it's really nice to see that for the silhouette. So I changed the position of her arms to go straight out and her cane goes in on another interesting angle. And then just added just a couple of little lines to imply that this is a skirt and that it's moving in this direction. I hope that this video has helped you to see that drawing people isn't as complicated as you think it might be. Breaking everything down into simple shapes really can help simplify everything for you. Have fun with this, challenge yourself, draw people who don't look like you. It will help you grow as an artist and it's a positive thing to do. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. This helps me to make more videos for you and I love doing them. You can shop my art prints on Etsy and you can follow my art journey on Instagram. Stay sparkly.